Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College in Decorah, Iowa, USA, bringing you the next in our series of What to Look For in the Night Sky. This time we're talking about the week of July 18, 2022, burning our way right through summer. Uh, last week, we talked about the moon passing by uh, planets and stars and, and thinking about the, these, these close groupings and watching the moon. We hadn't talked about the moons and the, the moon and the planets in a little while. And as we get hung up on stuff, you know, if you've watched these videos, we get hung up on stuff a little bit. We are going to talk about the moon doing this again this week. So in the coming week, we're going to talk about three different sort of pairings of the moon with other objects. And we'll begin on the night of the 18th, but really the morning of the 19th. So this is Monday night into Tuesday morning for those of us here in North America. And we're going to see the moon about as it rises in just around midnight. So just about midnight, as the moon rises uh, on the morning of the 19th, the night of the 18th, it will be about three and a half degrees below Jupiter. So it's going to be a really beautiful pairing here of the moon, a uh, 62, 63 degrees percent full, sitting just below Jupiter in the sky. So you'll see the moon and you'll see Jupiter as a bright dot above there. This whole thing rising about midnight and will be good for the rest of the morning after that. So if you can get out that morning and observe that, I think you're going to appreciate that pairing us. Always, then what we can do is we can track these changes and think about how the sky is changing. So the 60 to 65% full, each of the next two mornings, the moon's going to be about 10% less full. So on the morning of the 19th into the 20th, we're going to see, so this is after midnight on the night of the 19th and the morning of the 20th, we're going to see the moon only about 52 or 53 percent full instead of 62 or 63 percent full. And it's going to be sitting in Pisces. Now Pisces is a constellation we haven't talked a whole heck of a lot about. And it's going to be more or less seven and a half degrees above Alresha, the alpha star in Pisces. Even though it's not the brightest star in Pisces, it's given the alpha designation. This is one of these weird things that can happen. So it sits about seven and a half degrees. Remember, uh, your, your fist held out, we've talked about this a lot, your, your fist held out at arm's length is about 10 degrees. That's an angle of about 10 degrees. So you, you, you should be able to see the moon and look for a star that's somewhere between half a fist width and a full fist width below the moon. And that star is al -Resha. Now, it may not be that easy to see. al is a is an Arabic word uh, that, that means the cord. So Pisces is typically represented by fish in the, the sky. And sometimes when you see pictorial representations of the constellation of the asterism, you see a couple of fish, a pair of fish tied together on a string. Where somebody's like, think about it, you've got out, you've, you've had success fishing, you've caught a couple of fish and you put them on a stringer, and this can represent the knot on that string. So you've got a strand of stars up this direction, and a strand of stars up this direction, fish one, fish two, and a knot right there that is the cord that's holding those fish together. So that's al uh, the Arabic for the, the cord. That's all he's got. al is only a fourth magnitude star. Again, remember, as we talk about every week when we do this, uh, the magnitude system counts backward, so that third magnitude is brighter than fourth magnitude, second magnitude is brighter than third magnitude, and each step in magnitude is a factor of two and a half in how apparently bright the star is. Fourth magnitude is relatively faint. It, you can see it, but it's not going to pop out. So you're going to have to work a little bit. A pair of binoculars would help pull this out if you'd like. Uh, so this is a, a fourth magnitude star, about seven and a half degrees below the moon, and we have a string of faint stars moving up this direction and moving up this direction. As you move a couple of faint stars up this way, you get to Eta. Eta is actually brighter than Alpha, and Eta is a three and a half magnitude star. So see if you can pull that out in the glow of the moon right here. And the reason you want to do that, well, first of all, you just want to do that, right? You, you want to know your stars. Why? How could you? How could you not? Want, you, you wouldn't be watching this if you didn't want to know your stars. It's great to be able to look up at the sky and know which stars you're looking at and, and something about those stars. And so, of course, you want to find Eta. But in addition to that, just about one degree, about a finger width at arm's length now, about one degree to the east of Eta is a spiral galaxy M74. Remember, we live in a spiral galaxy, and so this spiral galaxy is a, is a bulge like this 
with a thin disc that looks like this. If you tip that up, we call that a face-on spiral galaxy. And M74 is a beautiful example of a face-on spiral galaxy. So it is, when it's tipped up, it's faint. That is, the, the contrast between the galaxy and the sky background isn't very much. And so it's hard to see the object, but it's big. It stretches out and it, and it makes an impressive big splash of light, even though it's a faint splash of light, on the sky. Now, with the moon sitting here at 50% full, it's going to wash that out and make that relatively hard to see. But wait two days. So wait up two mornings. Go out. Here's what you do. You go out on the morning. If you're, if you're here where I am in, in Iowa, Alesha is going to rise somewhere around 1 or 1.30 in the morning. Uh, Eta and M74 will rise a little bit earlier than that because they're further north. So go out and find Alesha, the moon, and Eta and draw yourself a sketch. And so you, you make a little sketch so you can come back and find this pattern of stars again a day later, two days later, when the moon has moved over here. Two days later and is less full, you should be able to pull M74 out a lot better. So if you've got a small telescope, try to find M74 lying there just about a degree away from Eta. It's worth the effort to look at it. A very nice, beautiful spiral galaxy. Uh, Alesha is a, a double star. It's a binary star, but I think you have to get your telescope out and try to see that too, but I think you're going to have trouble with it. It's a, a well-known double star. But it's been closing, closing, closing. If you, we can see the orbit, and, and over the last hundred years, the, the separation of these stars has been closing right down to the point that I, I don't know what it is right now, but there's probably only an arc second or, or an arc second and a half on the sky that separates them. So you might need pretty good skies and a pretty good telescope to pull those apart and see that that's a binary star. But why not try? You know, why not give it a shot while you're out there looking at this stuff? So that's what we got on the morning of the, the 20th after midnight on the night of the 19th. The next day, after midnight, on the 20th, into the morning of the 21st, there it is, 10% less full again, so the moon has gone from 62% full to 52% full to 42% full, and now the moon is sitting right next to Mars, and Mars rises for me here in the middle uh, of the United States. Uh, Mars rises for me about 1 or 1.30 in the morning. Depends on where you are relative to your time zone and whatnot. When it, when it rises for me at, on this morning of the 21st, that's, their separation is going to be about three degrees. The moon will still be closing down. So if you're west of where I am, the moon will have closed down on Mars a little bit more by the time it rises. If you're east of me, it will be a little bit further away. If you're halfway around the globe from me, then it's going to be a, a very different situation. But it'll still be relatively close, but there's going to be a, a much different much different gap on one side or the other, depending on which night you go out and look. But it's about 3 degrees. So Mars, this region rises 1 to 1.30 in the morning. Go out and look to the southeast, and you should see the moon, and the moon sitting next to Mars. So we can find Jupiter, we can find Mars, and we can find Alesha, and use Alesha to find Eta, and use Eta to find M74 in the sky. These are the objects that we're looking at this week. This is what we got for you. It's a great week to go out and observe. I'll let you in on a secret. Every week is a great week to go out and observe. So I hope you enjoy this. Get out. I hope you have clear skies and dark skies, and you have a chance to get out and observe some of this. As always, thanks for watching, folks, and have a great week.